that's what the doctor from the UFC said. Like, you know, you just need to, you know, stop. And I was like, I'm not stopping. I'm just going to slow down. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreadies.com. Today we're gonna to be doing an update to the Israel Adesanya gynecomastia situation. So I did a post after UFC when uh, he fought Paulo Costa and he showed up with some pretty blatant gynecomastia. Like it wasn't hard, even, even people who don't even know what gynecomastia is pretty much knew it was gynecomastia and it was very, very um, drastic, obvious, and the speed at which it came on the onset was like so dramatic relative to like historically in his career it's not like he ever had it so blatantly like when you actually circle back and look at some of his past uh, appearances you can find some shots of him where it seems like he has like a little bit of pre-existing gyno maybe maybe not but for the most part in 2020 it was like this thing just came out of nowhere essentially and just you know exploded so it was like you would think, you know, did something drastically change? Was he using performance enhancing drugs? What exactly happened here? And I kind of elaborated in my video on all of the potential outcomes that could, in my opinion, lead to gynecomastia. And frankly, off the top of my head, I don't even recall what they all were. I really went into a deep dive for like half an hour, just <laughs> digging into all the kinds of pharmacology, all the kinds of endocrinology I could think of that could justify, you know, what might make sense, whether it was actual hormone use exogenously, PEDs, whether it was like, you know, 5-alpha reductase inhibitors for hair loss, whether it was, you know, um, cannabis, whether it was whatever. I basically delved into it in great detail and gave my best educated guess on exactly what was going on. And, you know, highly anticipated is him getting his follow-up uh, lab test results that kind of show exactly what was going on here because there was a lot of you know, people were up in arms about what's going on. And um, there was even like this hashtag going around. I think it was like Nipplegate or something like that. I'll have to double check what it was after. I'll probably put it in the title. But um, he went on an interview with uh, Ariel Hawani or Helwani. I don't know. Sorry if I said that wrong. And basically, he has an update on his uh, nip situation. And I'm going to try and uh, jump around a little bit here so this thing doesn't get a copyright hit because you can only put in a certain amount of... Uh, I don't know why when you're like going with other YouTube videos, like why would that would be the case? But anyways, this is, uh, let me just jump around here and see the parts. Last yeah, time. Yeah. No, not really. Um, pituitary, oh, wait, the, the pituitary gland hmm. was checked, hormone levels, fine estrogen and on testosterone. So yesterday we had a ultrasound. Okay, so he says his hormone levels were fine, which does that really elucidate anything? Because you have to understand that the clinical reference range is just an arbit It's not an arbitrary range, but it's not necessarily an ideal specific number for high functioning men. It is a very, very broad range based on a wide um, amount of people that aren't, aren't necessarily representative of like a top tier athlete. They are guys who like you could fall into normal with a 300 nanogram per deciliter total test level, which by any guy standard who cares about performance metrics in the gym and whatnot would say is like a shitty 70 year old. So if we don't actually see the blood test values ourselves, we can't we can't just take for his word that they're fine. Like he could have had um, a total test of 300 and his estrogen, maybe it was in range. Maybe he had an estradiol of 30 picograms per milliliter, but it's like, just because that's in range, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to have a ratio that is in balance between estrogenicity in the body relative to androgenicity. Like at the end of the day, it comes down to, if you're gonna develop gyno or not, it essentially comes down to a ratio between stimulatory inputs on the breast tissue and inhibitory inputs. So when you actually look at this graphically, um, we have estrogen, we have growth hormone and circulating IGF-1, we have progesterone, we have prolactin, and these can all play an impact on ductal growth, alveolar differentiation, and this all contributes to the overall development of gynecomastia. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, we have testosterone, DHT, things that androgens that inhibit RNA transcription at the receptor site, things that regulate aromatization rates. You know, there's a lot of different factors that play into the balance in the body between androgenicity and estrogenicity, which will ultimately determine, are you gonna grow a titty or not? So for this guy, the main things we're looking at, just because your estrogen is in range, on a reference range, it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have too much estrogen relative to your test. 
Like and your estrogen might be just fine. But if you have low T, low DHT via whatever you're doing, which I elaborated in the last video, if you want to see, I'll put a card up. If you want to actually see my explanations of, you know, mechanism of action of certain drugs and how the pharmacology might interact with these downstream cascades that would ultimately lead to that titty. Um, <laughs> but um, for him, like clearly there's something going on on this upper part on the stimulatory action that is outweighing the inhibitory action on the bottom. So he delves into what exactly they said it was here. First of all, get out of the way. The blood values don't necessarily represent that you're fine just because you have normal levels. The reference ranges are incredibly broad and don't necessarily represent high quality function. So anyways, continue from here. To be honest, it might just be unhealthy living a little bit like because I'm not smoking weed. That's what, well, that's what the doctor from the UFC said. Okay, so the doctor from the UFC said smoking weed, which is interesting. And when he says unhealthy living, like typically, like, yeah, if your diet model is trash um, <laughs> and you're, you know, you're not getting any proper micronutrients in, you are micronu micronutrient deficient, or you're dieting yourself into the ground with a severe calorie deficit to make weight for a UFC fight, and you're otherwise androgen deficient in that process of weight cutting, or if you were too fat, which is not the case with him, and you had negative feedback through excessive aromatization leading to lower T levels, like there's numerous things that could explain it, but for him, it's kind of weird that an elite athlete who was, you know, in his prime and doesn't necessarily show to be a guy who severely weight cuts, as far as I know, he doesn't go nearly as aggressive as, you know, the guys he's fighting against, or at least in his last fight, it wasn't, he, his, you know, weight kind of fluctuations are not even close to the guys he's competing against. And um, does that necessarily mean like you can't develop a titty and you can't get low T? Like, no, it doesn't. But like, how would an elite UFC champion have a poor lifestyle unless you are, unless he's implying that smoking weed is a poor lifestyle, which, you know, I feel like a lot of people would argue against and the explanation for it, like the UFC, what do you say? The UFC doctor said it was weed. So I detailed weed a bit in my first video. And as far as the mechanism by which that might occur, it goes back to this graphical representation of the stimulatory action on breast tissue and what kind of inputs we have. So how cannabis actually interplays with these hormonal cascades is honestly actually pretty not well understood. Like there's some data that implies that intermittent use might um, increase prolactin and chronic use like decreases it. And then there's some that imply that it uh, literally binds to estrogen receptors and perhaps has uh, you know, um, negative feedback that might decrease um, gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus to the pituitary, which downstream decreases gonadotropin levels, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, which then downstream leads to a lower testosterone level, um, which, you know, if you actually look at this graphically, how that would interplay with the gyno is if you have, you know, lower um, GnRH, then lower gonadotropins, then lower T, you now have lower T and lower DHT, which then is a lower amount of this inhibitory action on breast tissue, which can then, you know, potentially lead to gyno. Or maybe you have, you know, there's a lot of evidence that supports that when you use weed chronically, you're going to impair your REM sleep. You're going to impair your uh, sleep latency. You're going to get a reduced benefit, I guess. You're going to have reduced sleep latency when you first start using it. But once you have chronic use and you start to acclimate and build a tolerance, you start to get to a point where you have to either, you know, you literally have to use it just to maintain a reasonable sleep latency and get to sleep properly. And then your sleep quality is actually impaired significantly. And if you try to come off, you have like this crazy insomnia driven like rebound effect because you're so dependent on it at this point. And then you, even when you're using it, you have impaired REM sleep too. So maybe that plays into his hormone production. Maybe he was just, just so happened to be like on the borderline cuff of shitty androgen production to begin with. And this sort of like tipped them over the edge in a balance of estrogenicity to androgenicity. It's kind of hard to say for sure, but it's like the evidence does not really support that weed on its own is going to literally on its own produce a giant titty. So, you know, a lot of people are going to be very skeptical of this, uh, you know, UFC doctor saying this, and it's sort of like potentially just a good roundabout way to get around even discussing the PED conversation. And they sort of touch on it briefly here, but it's more so just like, it's probably weed because, you know, obviously I don't use gear and it's impossible that it could be gear. So this is the only explanation. It's like, 
I don't know, it's just like the science has sort of skimmed around it and I don't expect him to know it, but I mean like it probably would have been better to have like the UFC doctor come on maybe and to explain it with better detail because I don't know, uh, like I feel like this, maybe Israel Adesanya doesn't actually care, but I mean like a lot of people hear this and they're just like, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> which is totally justifiable like at least bring on the doctor who actually said that and have him like try and explain the mechanism of action i think because then it would sort of at least reinforce the credibility of this sort of statement in my opinion uh, you know you just need to you know stop and i was like i'm not stopping i'm just gonna slow down i'm not <laughs> stopping smoking weed ever uh, also the referendum in new zealand you look stupid Okay, so he basically says he's never going to stop smoking and he's just going to slow down and, um, you know, I, I don't really know, dude. Like, uh, I would have liked to see the doctor come on and actually uh, give an explanation because it's like, for the rest of the interview, they're kind of just like, we're not really sure what this is. The doctor said it was probably the weed. So I'll just slow down and then that should just like justify, you know, just like rectify it. The hormone levels are fine. You know, it's just like this fat tissue and blah, blah, blah. And there's like, there's nothing really worrying about it. So it's just kind of like, I don't care. And that's it. No, I'm not as sensitive. It's actually calmed down, but it's just a fat deposit. And yeah, there's, I mean, well, man, hey, after performance like that, like I said, I think I was on steroids too. <laughs> so he basically comes back, says he would think he's on steroids too. And um, that's it. That's basically the end of the conversation about the gyno. So I don't know. It'd be cool to see the doctor come on and give an explanation. Cause if we actually saw the blood work, like, I don't like, obviously he has no, um, he doesn't owe us shit. He doesn't have to come on and show the blood work. The fact that he's even openly discussing it without just dismissing it. Some fighters would just be like, fuck off. I don't want to, I don't want to talk about my titty. So, um, you know, like kudos for at least touching on it, I guess. But I mean, like, it'd be cool to see the blood work from the doctor, kind of get his breakdown of it, talk about the weed and how it may have, like, surely this guy has baseline blood work we could reference. He's like the most elite fighter on the planet. He must have a hormonal profile, like, trend going from years ago to more current like how has that been fluctuating like what is going on with your your sleep like you probably use an aura ring what are your metrics like what is your testosterone level over the years what's your dht level are you using any pharmacology are you using finasteride are you using these things um that might influence it and actually reinforce that you are in fact natural because you would think you'd give yourself a bit of a better backstory to reinforce your credibility so you don't have people coming on and uh doing the whole uh, nipple gate dissection so I don't know, dude. It's uh, it's it's still too. There's red flags for me everywhere still. So I would uh like to see a follow up of the actual uh blood panel and like see what's going on. Kind of uh, I think it would just help if he's actually you know if he's actually in fact a natural athlete. Then uh, like let's see the fucking bloods, dude. You got them done. They look normal. Like if you if you were like borderline low T and we could like see it, maybe it would actually reinforce some of your statements here and we could actually get some sort of you know, baseline and see like what's been going on over the years. Maybe you've, maybe you're actually like at a point where naturally you just fucking are like going hypogonadal and you're ending up with gyno, you know, and maybe, maybe weed is like pushing you over the edge somehow. Like we don't really know though. And we can't just like take your word that everything's fine. So obviously you, this guy doesn't owe anything to us though. This is just me dissecting it for my own, your entertainment, my entertainment, and just for, uh, you know, figuring this shit out. Cause no one else is going to talk about it. So I guess let's see what happens in the future, but, um, that is the update, and that is my interpretation of uh, the, uh, did weed cause the gyna? So we'll see in the future, but uh, it'd be cool to see the blood, in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Is it just the weed? Do you think he was using exogenous hormones for the uh, last UFC event? What do you think happened? It's such a drastic change too. Like it's not like this was, even if it was pre-existing, it was very minor to the point where you would need a significant alteration in your lifestyle, your uh, something to, you know, exacerbate it to this degree. So, you know, what is the explanation? We shall find out, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. It helps the algorithm and it's much appreciated when you guys comment, like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplates1dates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description down below, my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, super convenient, as well as Gorilla Mind, Gorilla Mode, my turnkey nootropic and pre-workout formulas I designed from scratch myself. I don't outsource it to a private label manufacturer to make it for me and get like the best margins or anything. I literally sit down on a Word document, write this shit out myself from scratch, and I encourage you to pull out your current pre from the cupboard, literally look at the label, compare it to ours, and uh, it's pretty transparent why we are becoming a head and shoulders leader 
in this industry, if that's even a proper statement, becoming head and shoulders above the rest in this industry, whatever the fuck I'm trying to say. It's a better product than what you probably already have is what I'm trying to say. So get on the fucking train if you're not on the Gorilla Mode train. So check it out. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.